going, everybody? So uh, today it's going to be a very interesting video because um, we're going to compare a tool that I would normally not use, but then I found out that I desperately need it. And the tool, well, you see it's a midnight commander and in the light of comparing with it to previously reviewed file managers, we basically have a few qualities, right? Like dark mode, don't, well, it doesn't apply. Font size, similar to Windows File Explorer, doesn't apply. Updates compatibility, don't care. Easy navigation, care a lot, right? And convenient search, probably not that important, but still. And uh, what, well, I mean, what, what's the point? So let's see uh, Midnight Commander for Windows. We install it really quickly. That's like three megabytes and whatever. Create a desktop shortcut and say next, next install. And that's it. All right. You got me that commander by like, I don't know how many seconds passed, five seconds while I was talking. Okay. And press any key to continue. And that's it. We got it. So, what do we get here in terms of, well, Windows commander compared to any other file manager? Nothing. That thing is from the 90s. It's bad. It's like, ah, oh, you see, you get to, da to navigate in two folders and you get your menus like Northern Commander used to have. And it's ca kind of useless because it's still in the window. So even if I compare it to two of those opened, right? So I can go like this. For example, I have one of them open here, another one open here, and I have a better control over everything that happens on my computer when I have just two file window panels, file browser panels here. So this is nothing. However, let's go to Linux world and see uh, what is going on over there. So. On Linux, you got practically the same thing, and it's all cool. And you know, in most cases, you could run your commands, but here comes a very interesting thing. So let's say you're a guy that actually, uh, instead of running occasionally a command here and there on your infrastructure, suddenly you're that guy that needs to browse a lot of files and see their contents and go, uh, hoops and loops in order to edit them and to do stuff. So, so now you 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 learn all of your nice commands. Right? So that's like going to be ll, which is actually ls minus l, and it's going to be okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to show you actually the real example. So, uh, as usual, let's make it a little bit larger so it would be a little bit uh, more convenient for you to see. But we are getting somewhere in that thing. We're, we're, we're getting somewhere, right? So here we have it, and a little bit bigger, right? So I'm going to see the uh, var vols item, okay? And this is where all of my files from a Kubernetes install and applications reside, right? This is an NFS server, and I have a lot of things over here, and I have all of those volumes. So this would be uh, one that holds all of my configurations, and this one would be the one that holds all of my data. And one of them, uh, one second, kubectl, uh, one second, one second, one second. Uh, kubectl get uh, pvc get pvc minus n of b. One of them would have the logs, and logs would be uh, number three. All right. So I have one of the pods not working. Now, if you're not familiar with Kubernetes, let me show you. Kubectl get pods uh, somewhere. Okay, now it, this is just one namespace. Namespace is like a uh, segregation module, a uh, way for you to differentiate uh, which pods or containers in those pods belong to what function in your Kubernetes. And as you see, I have, I don't know, it, it just depresses me to see how many of those uh, exist and I need to know everything that happens to them. And I have more than one namespace. So we're talking about each of those having multiple containers inside, each of them producing a log, and I need to investigate all of them. So suddenly, suddenly those nice commands with ll and browse and search and find, 
they become uh, <laughs> no that's not nice in, anymore so uh, for example i want to know what's going on with ops bridge volume 3 right so i'm going to be ops Ops B Volume 3, and I just, okay, what's on the inside? And why did I do a well, an LL? Because if I go to uh, Ops Volume 3 and I check the contents and I see, well, you know what? I'm going to go to Content Manager, right? And then I see, oh, I, I don't want to be here. I, I actually wanted to be in another place. So I'll go CD. Uh, dot dot slash dot dot okay now i need to remember how many folders i went in right so all of this hassle and even before i got to log so do you want to see the logs let, let me show you that let me show you the logs right so i'm going back to the ops uh, volume 3 and i'm going to the ops v directory right which is the one that contains all of the logs for all of the pods now you see those repeating names it means that every time I deleted the pod, or it was self-destructed by some own thing, or I needed to do something uh, with infrastructure which spins a new pod with a new hash name, like those small letters over here that are spawned, there is a separate folder for that. So, uh, how many folders are there here? I don't know. There's a, a lot of folders, right? So, uh, you know what? I need to go and say I want the latest folder. So, it's going to be LL minus LTR. And now every time I go back and forth, I need to do this LLTR because it's going to be removed from my screen, right? So for example, I'll go to this one, to this executor, and I want to examine everything that happens here. So now I have a multitude of logs and each one of them needs to be listed in a reverse mode, like which one of them is the latest. So I'll go LL minus LTR, and sorry, uh, LL minus LTR, and uh, okay, well, those, few uh, logs probably are the ones that I need, but then I go back to browse another directory and it's LL minus LTR once more, right? And L minus LTR means that now I have to choose from all of those pods. And of course, it's not all of my pods. Those are just the ones that were deleted recently. And uh, it means that there are more lines over here than the amount of current pods that are running. And what do I do with all of that? So let me show you. I'll go to Midnight Commander. And uh, you know, uh, there is this thing uh, with uh, Windows that Linux doesn't have. With, uh, that's a topic for another video. But uh, Linux sucks because uh, you ever played a game with uh, someone that has a mouse and you have a controller or something? And they just beat you every single time? Because mouse is a very, very useful thing. And Midnight Commander allows you to use your mouse inside the uh, command line here. No, it, isn't it cool? It's like, it's super cool. Now you get your keyboard and your mouse and you use the best of them, right? So now I want to see the uh, panels and I want to have this distribution by uh, descending, right? Uh, I want to, instead of doing LL minus LTR to see from the bottom up, which of the uh, pods or the folders are the most recent ones, I just click on modify time. And now I have a descending list. Okay, so I know this is the post loader, so I, I click on it and I, you know what, I want to compare it to one of the other post loaders, so I'm going to modify time and I, I'm actually, I, I think I can search. I don't remember the exact command for search. I need to check it out, but basically I can filter out all of those and only the, uh, the ones that I need to compare it to another run, another execution of those pods, right? And the same thing happens here. Once I entered, I see all of those uh, nice, um, all of those nice files. I can mark them with a right click or shift right click and uh, basically perform multiple tasks by selecting them with the mouse. So I'm working with my two hands on two different things. And now I want to read the log. So what I'll do, I'll just click on view or I'll press F3 if I want to. And here it is. I can actually read the damn thing. Right, so uh, definitely it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And I can wrap and unwrap using uh, my mouse over here. I can go to, I can search basically everything that your more uh, or less commands or uh, cut with a grep does. Everything is done over here, right? 
and I, I don't even know what the format is doing, but I can do all of those uh, nice things and I can investigate without leaving uh, the same window, right? And I can go and browse between all those. So imagine yourself, you're that guy that needs to know what happened in all of those logs, right? And uh, for, uh, but you say, well, but say, but well, what about tail? So you go, you write tail, you continue writing. As you see here on the right side, it continues writing. So, and then I press control. Uh, I, I think I, it was supposed to be, I think it was supposed to be tail uh, out enter. It just pops the uh, file over here. And I can say tail, tail minus F, I forgot to do the minus F. And now I get to follow the file for as long as I want to. But once I stop, it goes back to midnight commander. And suddenly I can navigate all of those directories. So to me, to me, I mean, I was using uh, Linux without this thing, but it just dawned on me uh, last week that I, I just, I can't do it anymore. I just I can't do it anymore. I mean, I understand, you know, I have a server. Let's say I have a load balancer over here, right? And in load balancer, basically uh, on the whole machine, if it connects, actually. <laughs> okay, I have it somewhere here, right? Uh, on the whole machine, all I need is to modify uh, one file one file so it's going to be nano etc ha proxy ha proxy cfg so i don't need midnight commander here and i understand if you have this in the same case when you go to ssh and you perform a couple of simple tasks by just modifying a couple of files yeah but if you live in that server oh man uh it just it's not possible to to do without a normal file manager so to me midnight commander is definitely something that uh i'm just i'm just going to keep uh using and i'm actually changing my methodology for navigating the servers and how i create my machine templates because i i just i i can't live with this anymore there's just too much hustle and midnight commander while being very useless on windows it's super useful on linux to a point where uh, i don't want to just use the keyboard commands anymore all right, I hope uh, we agree on uh, on this uh, somehow, and maybe it kind of uh, um, helped you understand what, uh, what is going on. I'll see you in the next.